Hi, welcome all of you to the next uh, training program on uh, Fusion applications. Uh, today, I am going to discuss about uh, descriptive flux fields on the requisitions. There is a famous requirement, and then uh, some of our technical guys are facing some issues now. So, to exactly tell uh, what exactly this, I am not going to say uh, the descriptive flux fields on this now. And let me go on the share screen now. <clears throat> so, we are going to have a look at it now. <clears throat> so, let us go on the login system now. Go there, and then I will now run this requirement. Now it's a manage percentage requisition percentage DEC percentage, and then enter it. So that's the, that's the one is the manager requisition descriptive flux field. Is the one so I will now go there, click on it. So let us now see about how to create a requisition descriptive flux field for your end line. Actually, <coughs> go there. One so so here on the second, what happens uh, the requisition descriptive flux field comes in uh, three different areas. Now, one is uh, the header level. One is the line level and then one is the distribution level. So in US, we have what happens? These three uh, things are also there. So I'll now select this one and then click on edit now and go inside. <clears throat> and then uh, it has got a name of a requisition. It does. It's a descriptive flux field. The module is self service procurement. Fine. So this is the code actually. Fine. So if uh, technical, you are technically what happens? You must know the flux field code actually. PUR. It is not a PR actually. PUR stands for self service procurement. So it is a coming under the module. And then the description also you must know very clearly. Fine. It is uh, basically called. Uh, uh, what's called create attributes for uh, okay, right. custom attributes to a requisition header. Fine. That is what the technical team create now. And then I will now select it and then click on edit now. So let me create a new one now. So I click on plus now. So let me get a new one now. So I will now say it's a, uh, nana underscore city underscore value set one. I'm going to create it now. Fine. Let us now create. A segment now, sorry, I'm not creating a segment now. Fine, I will not say Nana City. Fine, Nana City is the one I'm not creating it. So I will not say segment. <clears throat> segment one, I'm not creating it. So take a copy of it, and then whatever the moment you give a tab, the name gets copied into code and the API code. And then I will not make the data set as what character now. And then I'm not going to create a value set now. I will create a value set. I click on the create value set. I'm not creating a value set now. So I will know here, I will not say it's Nana. <clears throat> Nana underscore city <coughs> underscore value set one. I'm going to create it now and take a copy of it and then I put in the description. <coughs> the module will be procurement actually. We'll go there and then choose the model procurement. Can search now. So let us not create the choose the model now. It's procurement module. <coughs> so procurement and then enter it. So I'll now choose the top one and then click on OK. The model is now chosen. And then if you see the validate validation type. We have five such validation types are available here. There are five validation types are available here. If you go and then have a look at the thing in the in the email, you go to sysadmin and then go to application and then go to validation and then go to the sets. In this place, we have around eight are there. So the translation dependent and then independent are now pushed over to the language pack actually. So we have this independent dependent and then uh, none is now known as format only. Actually. The none is known as format only. We have a subset and table. So there uh, we don't have a subset, but what happens? We have a table. But a special and para there. Again, again uh, some uh, there are some changes over here and there. Uh, that will be uh, natural. And then have a look at that. And all this. So the sort of weight has been made to join. And then in the value validation, we have this now. And in this place, what happens? You go there. I will now make it as what independent now. And then as far as the format validation is concerned, we have multiple things. And then I'm going to give a character. And then they have introduced one value subtype in this uh, fusion now. Fine. We don't have such a value type. We have only valid validation type here. No subtypes are available that has been introduced over here now. Drop it on and then make it as a text now. And then apart from that, the remaining things are same. The maximum characters I'm going to give it as 10 now. And then here also we have the maximum characters, maximum size, all these things. The format validations are almost all the you know. All these things are there. Fine. Click on it. And then I will now the value set is not moving. Click on click on save now. I will now click on save. Now I'm going to give a values for this. I click on manage values now. I click on manage values. I will now add values over here now. I click on plus. Let me add the values now. So, <clears throat> Madras, I will put it and then click on save and close <clears throat> and then click on plus now. And then look at Bombay. <clears throat> I go there, click on save and close. So, whatever values you are given, it will be coming over here now. I will go there. So, two values we are given. So, if you give a search, whatever values are there, it will be coming over here. The Madras and Bombay are coming. I click on save and close by which what happened? The value set is now created. So, the value sets of the values have been created. And then uh, it is all done now. The manage values is also done. 
and afterwards, whatever we give a C1 close, it comes to the main screen. So once when it comes to the main screen, the value set which has been recently created will be getting populated over here now in the validation area. And then here, I will now say a default value, I will now make it as a constant. And then there, I will now give a value of what? My class might go there. And then I can even uh, give a prompt to this now, fine. You now putting the segment on, fine. Uh, I will now say enter <coughs> city of residence. <coughs> I'm putting some value. So that will be basically getting prompted whenever in the requisition field when they ever use it to prompt. And that will be a list of values. The display size I will now reduce it to 25 characters now. So we can even reduce it. And the height everything, we can adjust everything now. Fine, it's all done now. So it is what entry of city of residence is the prompt which is now going to come up. Fine, click on save and close by which whatever the segment is now completed now. Now what happens, I will, there is a small bug here. So here, what you have to do is we have to change a small description. Fine, there is a small bug. So the description has to be changed actually in the previous one. I will now remove the dot dot. And there are multiple dots are there. So that itself is a change fan. I'll remove two dots. And this bug will be getting rectified in release 13, I think. In release 12, we are still having the bug now. So click on save and close by which it is not done. Now we go there and then we are going to deploy it. Now I click on deploy. <clears throat> so once when it is deployed, we have to log out and log in to see the changes getting affected as such. So it's now fully deployed and click on OK. And you can see the deployment tick mark also coming up over here now. And look at me. I click on done and then let me log out and log in now. <clears throat> I click on done and then come out of it. And then so totally come out and then click on it and then it'll now log in now. So click on sign out. So upon sign out and sign in, the changes which you have made will be affected. And then when you are signing it out, always go via confirm button and confirm button is a must now. Then only what happens, it will be a proper shutdown actually. <clears throat> and then go there. And then let us now again go there. Stay 50 underscore EMP1. So let me again log in into the systems of Oracle Fusion applications now. And then there, I will now go to the requisitions. <clears throat> so once when you log in, so we are coming inside now. We land up in the springboard now. In the springboard, you have on the procurement, below the procurement, we have the purchase requisition. Click on the purchase. It is equivalent to a menu under submenu. So click on the purchase requisition submenu, equivalent to EBS basically. Then there, I will now go and then try to create a requisition now. I click on the requisition line entry and then I'm creating it now. And let me delete this existing requisition. I go there, click on the requisition line entry and then I'm going to create a requisition now. So I'll now put some item over here now and then add it to <coughs> the requisition area. I click on it. So since I'm logging in with the K50, I will now put the K50 item over here now. So it's not getting logged in. I will now choose the item one over here now. Whatever be the quantity, it doesn't matter. I click on add to requisition by which whatever this line gets the right hand side now. So 1024 is the requisition number. It's now getting added up. So if you click on edit and submit, you can now see the descriptive flux will coming up over there now. So you can now see, you enter the CC level license, find drop down, and then you're going to choose it. So Bombay and others are coming, which are reserved. And you can use it in approvals also. <clears throat> if the city is going to be Bombay, what happens? It has to go to Bombay in charge. If it is going to be Madras, it has to go to the Madras in charge like that. What happens? You can even redirect the requisition approval routing in this place now. Requisitions are more powerful when compared to EBS. In EBS, we have only uh, three methods of approval. One is the position hierarchy, one is the supervisor hierarchy, and then one is the AME. And then here, there are six methods of that. It is fairly enhanced, and then AME is inbuilt, embedded in the system. And so, what happens? It will not be giving any, uh, what happens? No complex setups are there, fine. The setups are jujubi here. Fine. So easy. We can very easily do it. Anybody, fine. This is a child's play as far as uh, what happens? The approval setup is concerned. It's easy, complex, and then powerful. In fact. So that much of a, uh, information is there, fine. So this uh, completes about how to create a descriptive flux field on a requisition, actually in Fusion applications, fine. So do join my training and then out of us I get benefited. I, I'm having, uh, I have already implemented almost two project on this uh, Fusion procurement. And then uh, I have around 20 years of domain experience. And then I, I am a teacher for the past 10 years, actually. I, I did taught a lot of people, more than 2,000 people in the last 10 years on EBIS uh, uh, applications, supply chain management. So you'll definitely be getting a rich uh, experience whenever you are training now. Fine. Presently, currently, our training is undergoing. So always write to me, and then uh, what happens? Always do subscribe to my uh, this thing, and then uh, click on the bell icon by the side of the subscribe subscribe button. So that what happens? Your alert will be getting passed on to you automatically whenever uh, you subscribe. Whenever uh, I upload any new video. So whenever I'm uh, having a new learnings, I will always be uploading it. And so what happens? You please uh, do it, and then uh, best wishes to all of you for a prosperous career in Fusion Apps. Bye. <laughs>